When you're considering getting new gerbils, your first thought may be to go into the pet store and get whatever they suggest is suitable. But in most countries, this is going to result in a less than ideal setup as there aren't good regulations on what companies can and cannot sell for pets. So in this video, I'm going to go over the basic checklist of things you'll need for your new gerbils and I'll leave a link to download the checklist in the description. The very first thing you'll need is a suitable sized enclosure. The ideal size is around 0.5 meters squared with a 55 centimeter depth, which works out at around the size of a 250 liter tank. So the closer you can get to this size, the better it'll be for them. To keep costs down, keep an eye out on places like Facebook Marketplace and other resale sites. You may be able to find a good sized tank without having to spend as much money, although they may need a bit of DIY and cleaning to get them ready to use. If you've already got gerbils and need to upgrade, then plastic bins may work as a temporary solution. Just make sure to get the larger size you can, fill it with bedding, add lots of chew toys, and consider doubling up for extra security. You also need to consider whether or not you want a topper for your tank. I personally prefer them because they allow you to keep their water and other stuff from getting buried in their bedding, as well as allowing you to use the entire base tank as digging space, which is extremely important for gerbils. You can make an adapter platform with gerbil safe wood so that you can use any topper with your tank. If you decide not to do this, you can instead simply buy or make a lid for your tank and use a divider to section off an area for digging. Just make sure this is as large an area as possible because gerbils spend the majority of their time inside their burrows digging and rearranging things. So this is what's most important to them. As well as your main tank, you'll need a spare enclosure just in case the gerbils fight and need separating, or in case of health issues that need monitoring. They also come in handy for cleaning time. You can either use another small glass tank or you can use one of the smaller gerbilariums we saw earlier. Covering the base in dark paper can help them to feel more comfortable in the smaller space. Just leave a flap that you can open to check on them if you need to. Next, you'll need bedding. Most pet stores will likely recommend something like kiln dried pine, but this may be unsafe. There are a wide range of good bedding options that you can use, each with their own pros and cons. I explain them all in this video, so check that out to help you decide which beddings you think will be best for you and your gerbils. You'll also need food. While pellets may help prevent selective feeding, they offer no enrichment, so it may be a good idea to use a mix of pellets and muesli. Something like a 50-50 mix can work really well. Unfortunately, not all pet food producers use appropriate ingredients or use up-to-date nutrient requirements for their foods so you want to look for brands that meet these basic requirements. You won't need a food bowl, as the most enriching way to feed gerbils is to scatter feed and use foraging toys. This also helps to reduce the risk of any fighting over food. Next, you'll need a water bottle or bowl. A bottle will make sure no bedding gets in the water, but I found they're prone to leaking. If you decide to use a bowl, you'll need to make sure it's on a raised platform or in your topper so that it doesn't get filled with bedding and make sure it's not too deep so that the gerbils can't fall in. These night angel bowls are specifically designed to prevent small animals from climbing inside, so they could be a really good option. Gerbils are considered desert animals, which means they've adapted to bathing in sand instead of water. They also tend to use their sand baths as toilets, which can really help cut down on tank cleaning. Make sure you use sand and not dust or powder, as these can stick to the linings of gerbils' airways, causing respiratory problems. But as sand is technically a loose, granular substance, this means sand can be made from a variety of materials, not all of which are safe. Some sands are made from high calcium rocks like limestone or aragonite, or they can be made from clay, all of which can act like dust and cause the same problems, making them unsafe to use. The sand you want to look for is anything made from quartz, such as reptile desert sand, certain kinds of chinchilla sand, or children's play sand, as long as you sterilize it by baking in the oven for a few hours and sieving out any larger pieces. For a container to hold the sand, you don't want anything shallow, as gerbils will almost definitely end up kicking it all out. Instead, you can use something like a tall-sided dog bowl, a cookie jar, or a fish bowl. You'll also need something to sieve the sand, such as the scoops that come with the plastic sand baths, or something like a tea strainer could also work well. Like other small pets, gerbils need more than just bedding for enrichment. They can also benefit from hides, tunnels, and toys buried in the bedding, as well as some hides and chew toys in their topper or low bedding area. Plastic toys aren't suitable for use inside their enclosure because of how much gerbils chew on things, so instead opt for chew-proof things like ceramic or things that are safe to chew on, like wood. It's also good to include some kind of rocks or stones to help wear down their claws. I find slate pieces work really well. Every two to three months, you'll need to clean out your enclosure, so you'll need something to clean with. 
You can use pet safe disinfectant, or some people also like to use a 50-50 white vinegar and water solution, but you'll need to air the room and enclosure out for a while afterwards to clear the smell. You can also consider having some treats and forage things on hand. Pumpkin and sunflower seeds as well as mealworms can make really great treats, but don't give these too often as they're quite high in fat. You can also give them things like dried flowers, leaves and fruit and veg, as well as seed sprays like millet and oat. Unlike some other rodents, wheels aren't essential for gerbils, but they can provide them with an extra source of enrichment. If you decide to use one, it should be around 30 centimeters in diameter to prevent their backs and tails from bending too much while they run. Something else that's useful to have on hand is a small pet carrier for any vet visits or for traveling. Playpens can be another source of enrichment for gerbils as long as they have a way back to their enclosure. They can also be a good way to hang out and bond with your gerbils, but they're by no means essential, so it's entirely up to you if you want to use them. Now that you've got all your gerbil supplies, you may want to know how to use them in your own setup. So take a look at this video where I use different hides and tunnels to create a buried playground for Timon and Pumba to explore, which may help give you an idea of how you can set up your own enclosure. And I'll see you over there. Thanks for watching.